Paul Delvaux, born in 1897, was a Belgian painter known for his dreamlike themes of beautiful women, classical architecture, trains, railway stations, and skeletons, which he frequently combined. He is often referred to as a surrealist, despite the fact that he only briefly connected with the surrealist movement. He was mainly influenced by the works of Giorgio de Chirico and René Magritte, but he created his own fanciful topics in hyper-realistic style, mixing the meticulous classical beauty of academic painting with the strange juxtapositions of surrealism. Delvaux spent his whole career exploring, naked and skeletal, clothed and unclothed, male and female, desire and terror, sensuality and death, Delvaux's fundamental fears in fact, and the bigger themes of his latter work. Delvaux was born in a new technological era, one of creativity and inspiration. He was attracted by railroads and trams, but his greatest love was Jules Verne's journey to the center of the earth, 1864, which he adored for its exotic realms and eerie pictures. Delvaux was expected to follow in his father's footsteps as the son of a lawyer, therefore he pursued a classical education. His creativity was fueled by Greek tales, particularly the narrative of Odysseus. He recalled his boyhood terror of a skeleton displayed in his school's music room. His nights were disturbed by the skeleton's leering grin, which provided as grist for his busy imagination. All of these formative experiences made an indelible imprint upon his memory, he once said, youthful impressions, fixed once and for all in the mind, influence you all your life. Delvaux attended the Belgian Academy de Beaux-Arts in Brussels from 1920 to 1924. His family pushed him to become an architect, but he eventually relocated to Constant Montel's painting workshop. In the old Sunnian forest, on the outskirts of the city, he studied life drawing and landscape painting. Later in life, he sarcastically referred to his practice of painting nudes in the morning and landscapes in the afternoon as his full education. Then from the early 1930s, he began to add nudes into his landscapes. A spark was lit in his mind when he attended the Surrealist Minotaur show in 1934. His exposure to Surrealist art and ideas changed his perspective on painting. The creator of Surrealism, André Breton, said that Surrealism allowed you to experience your youth, a moment of adorable unrealities, more closely than the adult world could. Delvaux's fascination with his boyhood wants and concerns began to spill forth into his canvas, nudists, skeletons, temples, railroads, mythology, and Jules Verne figures all appeared. His bright, bizarre, and ageless sights reflect the adult world through the eyes of a child. His work reflects an adult longing for lost feeling and the wonderful imagination of youth. He appreciated Giorgio de Chirico's work, particularly its ambient quiet and shadows, as shown in Nostalgia of the Infinite, 1913. Delvaux began adopting the surrealist method of poetic shock in his paintings in the late 1930s. Surrealists employed the method to make collage, or cut-up, poems, which required actually cutting and rearranging text in the style of collage to create poetry. Delvaux attempted to establish a visual counterpart to this strategy by combining seemingly unconnected shapes, topics, and concepts in his paintings. André Breton admired Delvaux's weird worlds, and when he exhibited alongside René Magritte in 1936, Delvaux's art found a broader audience. In Belgium, autonomous surrealist organizations had formed. Some were skeptical of Breton's views of dreams and the unconscious, but others, like as René Magritte, were more intimately associated with Breton and the Paris Surrealists. Delvaux believed that Freud's psychoanalytic notions were unimportant to him. He remarked that he tried to copy reality to transform it into a type of dream, rather than painting his dreams. While he had professional and personal contacts with several surrealist painters, he remained autonomous and did not consider himself to be a surrealist. Magritte ridiculed Delvaux for his bourgeois upbringing, claiming that Delvaux was recognized solely for the numerous nudes he painted. Despite the fact that he painted several nudes, they all seemed to be the same, 
they are equally fleshy and trance-like, enticing, yet distant. Delvaux once stated that they were inspired by a carnival exhibit at the Spitzner Freak Show in Brussels. A naked wax figure of a sleeping Venus had captured his attention. Delvaux's nudes frequently have a waxy texture that betrays the spectacle's impact. They are unfriendly and cold. Delvaux remarked, as though in response to the aloofness of his nudes he stated, a nude is erotic even when indifferent, when glacial. What else would it be? The eroticism of my work resides in its evocation of youth and desire. He visited Italy in 1937 and 1939. The architecture of Florence, Rome, and Pompeii provided a foil against which his nudes could express emotion, aided by his particular use of light. The combination of nudity with buildings brought together opposing components such as lifeless stone and glowing flesh, public and private, controlled and sensuous. The presence of a man wearing a bowler hat amid the nudists added to the poetic shock desired by Delvo with such juxtapositions. Sometimes these characters symbolize the common man, and other times they are based on real folks Delvo saw on the street. Delvo's men may possibly be influenced by Magritte, who was known for painting fellows with bowler hats. Interestingly, Delvo's men in his paintings do not speak with other figures, which might mirror the artist's chaotic life at the time. His marriage was in trouble, and Belgium was under Nazi domination by 1940. In the face of these difficulties, Delvaux retreated into the world of his paintings. Delvaux's works of the late 1920s and early 1930s began to include nudes in landscapes, influenced by Flemish Expressionist artists. His naked figures and portraits from this time are stiffly posed, whether outside or in home settings within. Few of his paintings from the late 1920s have survived. During this time, his childhood passions reappeared. What had been a boyhood fear of skeletons had changed into a fascination, and he researched and sketched them in the Museum of Natural History, remarking that he had grasped the beauty and expression of them. Delvo, like his nudes, purposefully made his skeletons look out of place in his odd surroundings. He used them in lifelike attitudes, even in a contentious series about the Passion of Christ, feeling that they added a live element to his fanciful surroundings. Many of his pieces reflect his boyhood fascination with trams and railways. These paintings are frequently situated in moonlit train platforms and feature a solitary tiny girl. Delvoa's longing for his beginnings is revealed through the re-emergence of motifs from his boyhood. The girl who appears frequently may be meant to represent Alice in Wonderland, whose strange experiences were a topic in surrealism. His passion for trains earned him the moniker, the painter of stations. The locations are either ordinary moonlit urban vistas or antique ruins, exhibiting absurdist tableaus with dreamlike accuracy and clarity. Delvo would occasionally insert himself into the picture, appearing either naked or fully dressed in a work suit. Mirrors, the full or crescent moon, candles, literature, and flute musicians are common elements. Delvo would return to variants on these subjects throughout most of his lengthy career, with notable deviations. Among these are his paintings from 1945 to 1947, which are flattened and have warped and forced perspective effects. He had felt stuck in a loveless marriage at the time. The viewer's sight is important to his paintings, which are frequently varied by odd views, various vanishing points, windows or apertures, and mirrors. Perspectives are occasionally demarcated in the distance by telegraph wires or steel rails crisscrossing or converging. Straight and man-made lines, as well as the curving curves of the body, are sometimes more essential than a subdued color palette. Paul Delvo, a painter of incongruous dreamscapes who was, after René Magritte, the best known of the Belgian surrealists, died in Verne, Belgium, at the age of 96 in 1994.